on the upgrade. What is the Kirchhoff's first law is the currents passing towards a junction is equal to the current passing away from the junction. This is the junction. Let us make it as A. If we see the diagram, I1 is the current coming towards the junction and I2 current I3 are moving away from the junction. According to Kirchhoff's first law, I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. This is Kirchhoff's first law. Kirchhoff's current law. K, C, L. Kirchhoff's current law. So, from this, we can prove if we take this as junction from that circuit, that we can justify the Kirchhoff's first law as the incoming current I1 is equal to outgoing I2 and I3. So I1 is the sum of I2 and I3. So all the observations coming from the voltmeter V1, V2, V3, we can prove the Kirchhoff's current law, KCM. Right. Now this is the circuit diagram of Kirchhoff's gravitation loss. This is R1, R2 and R3. Three resistance boxes we are keeping in this way, connections. We are keeping the resistances R1 and R2 as constants that are at 10 ohms. We are taking the observations by changing R3 from 10 ohms to 100 ohms. By changing, varying the resistance R3, 10 ohms, 20 ohms, 30 ohms, 40 ohms, 50 ohms, up to 100 ohms, we will note the voltage drop across R1 that is V1 and V2, V3. We will note down the voltage from the multimeter. By using multimeters, we can note the V1, V2, V3. After that, for getting the current passing through R1, that is I1, we can obtain from Ohm's law. What is Ohm's law is? I is the current passing through a byte is voltage by resistance. V is equal to I R. A constant temperature voltage is equal to current degree resistance. So I is equal to V by R. By using this Ohm's law, we can measure the current passing through the resistance boxes R1. Now we are going to verify the Kirchhoff's first law and second law. Kirchhoff's first law is current law. Kirchhoff's current law. First law is Kirchhoff's current law and the second one is Kirchhoff's voltage law. I already explained on the board about the KCL and KVL. Now we go to the practical session. Here is the circuit with three resistances. We are using resistance boxes. This is R1, R2 and R3. 
three resistance boxes in which R1 and R2 are connected in series. You see the circuit. This is R1, R2 and R3. We are connecting R1 and R2 in series with the connecting wire. This is the connecting wire. The other terminal of R1 is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. This is the battery eliminator which produces some current to the circuit and this is a closed circuit. After giving some current to the resistance R1 by a positive terminal, we are connecting the positive terminal to the resistance box R1 and the other terminal of R1 is connected in series to the resistance box R2. This is the connecting wire. And this is a junction. Whether this or this is a junction. And this junction is again connected to the third resistance box R3. This is the resistance box R3. This is the, this or this is the junction is connected to the resistance box R3. This is R3. Again, the negative terminal of the battery is connected to the other terminal of R3 and this will again connected to the resistance box R2. This is the connecting wire. Again, I am telling the circuit connections. First of all, we are connecting the positive terminal of the battery to the resistance box R1. The other terminal of the resistance box R2 is connected in series with the resistance box R2 and this junction will again be connected to resistance box R3. This is the second terminal of R3 and this goes to the negative terminal of the battery and again to the resistance box R2. This is the connection. Overall, all connection is in closed circuit. What we have to do is, first after operating the battery, we'll check the resistance box keys as connected tightly. I'm closing all the resistance boxes. We are putting zero resistance in all the resistance boxes and keeping all the keys first of all and checking for the connections for tight. Any electrical circuit should be connected tightly, the connecting wires. We are also using the multimeter. Observe the readings of voltage drop against R1 and voltage drop against R2 and through R3 by using this multimeter and keeping this multimeter at DC voltage two terminals of the multimeter this is common and this is positive. So what we have to do is, we check the voltage across R1, zero. First of all, I am observing zero resistance and zero voltage, no voltage is coming. Now I am keeping 10 ohms in R1 and 10 ohms in R2. And throughout the experiment, we are keeping the resistances as constants in R1 and R2. I am also keeping 10 ohms resistance in R3. So here also, 
I kept three volts. Now I'll check the voltage drop across R1. This is 3.72. I load this in the table. This is the table. We are going to note the observations. Serial number 1. Resistance in the box R3. As we are keeping the R1 as 10 ohms and R2 is 10 ohms as constant resistances in the resistance boxes R1 and R2. And I am noting, observing the PD across R1, R2, R3 with the varying values of resistance in resistance box R3. So first of all I kept 10 ohms in the R3 also and observing the voltage across R1 that is 3.7 I am noting this 3.7 in the same way the resistance box R2 3.2 and across R3 3.46 in this way we observe the readings as 20 ohms by keeping 20 ohms in R3 by keeping 30 ohms in R3 20 plus 10 30 ohms 20 plus 10 30 ohms I am keeping 30 ohms in the R3 and observe the voltage drop against R1, R2 and R3 and note the observations in the table. In this way, we can observe the values up to 100 ohms. So with varying volt resistance in the R3, I note the voltages across R1, R2 and R3. So what is KCL is, in a junction, incoming currents and outcoming, outgoing currents are equal according to KCL. Incoming currents and outgoing currents are equal. So how we we'll verify this first law as, we will use the Ohm's law. We will use the Ohm's law. That is V is equal to IR. What is our first law of Kirchhoff's law is? This is the circuit and income current is I1. Outgoing current at the junction is I3 and I2. So at this junction, according to Kirchhoff's first law, I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. This is the verification of first law. So how we will get the I1 is from by using Ohm's law. We know the resistance. We know the resistance 10 ohms and voltage across R1 is 3.7. So by keeping the observations in all the 10 readings, we will check I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. Already we discussed the Kirchhoff's first law. Now we are going to the Kirchhoff's second law. That is KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law. With the same observations, we can prove the Kirchhoff's voltage law also. What we are taking for the Kirchhoff's first law, that are V1, V2, V3. We are placing the same measurements in the second table for the verification of the first second law. And we are adding the V1 and V2 in this column. V1 and V3 in this column. At last, what we are observing here is V1 plus V2 is equal to V1 plus V3, that implies V2 is equal to V3. 
by proving that this v2 is equal to v3 we can justify and prove the kirchhoff's second law what is kirchhoff's second law is the voltage drop in a loop if two loops are there two loops are there v1 the voltage across the resistance r1 is splitting up into two voltages v2 and v3 and we we can observe two loops two loops so in this loop the voltage net voltage will be equal to this voltage from the r1 and r2 that is v1 plus v3 is equal to v1 plus v2 this in this loop this is v1 plus v2 in this loop v1 plus v3 so by equating by showing the two columns values as same we can prove the kirchhoff's second law thank you to kirchhoff's second law that is kirchhoff's voltage law we use the observations took from the verification of first law we use the same observations to verify the second law also so what is second law is the algebraic sum of voltages in a closed loop is zero so how we are going to prove the second law is that the same observations we are taking v1 plus v2 is equal to v1 plus v3 why well, because the voltage drop against r1 is v1 and against r2 is v2 according to kirchhoff's voltage law the algebraic sum of product of current into resistance sigma ir is equal to sigma e electromotive force in a loop this is the kirchhoff's voltage law the algebraic sum of product of currents and resistance in a closed loop is equal to the electromotive force present in the loop so v1 plus v2 gives the product of current and resistance in this loop and uh, from this we can prove v2 is equal to v3 or v2 minus v3 is equal to 0 this is the kirchhoff second law the al the net voltage in a circuit is zero that is v2 minus v3 is equal to zero or v2 is equal to v3 in this way we will prove the kirchhoff second law with the same observations of kirchhoff first law